Mother's Day's just around the corner, and while brunches are being booked and trips are being planned, there's a lot of us who won't be able to make it to celebrate with mom. With 1-800-Flowers.com, distance doesn't mean anything because you can still brighten your day with a beautiful bouquet. Right now, when you get ahead of the Mother's Day rush, 1-800-Flowers is giving you an exclusive 24 for 24 offer. 24 multicolored roses for 24 bucks. That's only a dollar a rose. With a bright and beautiful mix of premium roses and a rainbow of colors, these blooms are guaranteed to show mom just how much she's loved. Multicolored roses are the perfect way to surprise all of the moms in your life. Wife, aunt, sister, grandma. Roses from 1-800-Flowers are picked at their peak from Premier Farms and shipped overnight to ensure freshness. 24 multicolored roses for only 24 bucks. It's an amazing offer. But you got to hurry because it expires today. Just pick your delivery date and 1-800-Flowers will handle the rest. Don't put this off. Order today from 1-800-Flowers.com. It's what mom would want you to do. To order 24 stunning multicolored roses for only 24 bucks, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash Wingo. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash Wingo. Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. They're different. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This is a different team this year. Different. Rattled it down from 22 feet. This is something else from LeBron James. I can't breathe watching this. Stick that in your pipe and (laughs) smoke it, we the north. What is wrong with you, (laughs) y'all? 41 for LeBron James. My quick breakdown of Toronto tonight. (laughs) I'm choking over there, Mike. Choking again. Can somebody give this guy a Heimlich? Obviously, if the Raptors lose tonight, the series is over. Well, it was a good first half. Wow. Raptors shot 60% at a two-point lead, and then the roof caved in the third quarter as LeBron James did LeBron James things. Can you blame me for at least being the one dissenter, the one who was trying to give hope to a wonderful country and saying the Raptors are no, still in this thing? I, I, you mean now or no, yesterday? Night, yeah. Okay, no, 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 because I, I did think the Raptors were going to pull it off last night. We'll obviously get into the game some, but, yeah. I mean, they just... Cleveland has our number. LeBron has our number. I mean, you you could almost literally see the eyes get wide and just the, the coming up short in Toronto. <laughs> like flowers, just, you see the just, wilting, just kind of the entire wilting, and then just and just the the kind of you know the kind of the pre throw up when you just kind of like you can feel you know, it coming. Just, yeah. it's coming up there, and then <laughs> and then you just they let loose with projectile and just all over themselves. It was just absolutely awful. We'll get into that. We yep. we brought up a quick topic. Uh, uh, at the end of the last hour, there was a Brinks truck that on the highway that its back doors opened up and over $600,000 of money went flying around. People were coming in from the, the neighborhoods grabbing the money, stopping their cars grabbing the money, and I asked the question, would you keep it or would you give it back? And we're getting a ton of response, and we'll get to all the response. You can do it at Golik and Wingo, or you can do it on our phone. You can leave a message, 860-506-5505. I think one of the best answers I've seen, and we'll get into a lot of these, was from Philip. He said, "If I scooped up three hundred bucks, I'd give back two hundred. Yeah. So if you scooped up a thousand, give back six hundred. He's like, then how much would they know I, I actually took? <laughs> so I gave some back. So I'm free from guilt of at least uh, by no, 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 not not by morality guilt. Sure. Yeah, yeah. By guilt of for, they think yes, I gave yes. back the money. Yes. Little <laughs> they know, I still had some stuck in in my pants. By that was interesting." Interesting. That's the guy got. This is terrible. But I know a guy once. He found a wallet. He used the guy's credit card, but then found him and returned the wallet. And the guy said, when he opened the wallet, he goes, oh, the money's still in there. Like, thanks so much. You could have taken the money. He's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. Meantime, he'd use the credit card to go buy stuff. So when you say, I know a guy, was it really you? <laughs> no, it was. Was it? <laughs> I would cop to it now. This uh, the statute of limitations. A guy. <laughs> Air quotes. <laughs> friend of a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Adnan Verkin for Trey Regolik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Once again, 860-506-5505. 860-506-5505. Uh, let us know what you would do with the money. Would you keep it or would you return it? As always, we're presented by Progressive Insurance and all of our phone guests on the <laughs> Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. I feel like there's more and more people who are saying along those lines. Like, you know what? 100 bucks, 300 bucks. Daddy needs a new set of wheels. I think I think it's leaning in that direction to 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 keep it yeah to keep it yeah, yeah. Oh, and 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 because people are saying listen it's insured <laughs> it's insured so don't worry about it some guy says come on Golik the money's insured unless it's in California from a dispensary how the hell are you supposed to know that right. hey hey sir where did this money come from that's flying around you know is yeah, it yeah. insured okay then I'll keep it all right let's get to what's trending before Brian Windhorst will join us momentarily. 
Matt Ryan is signing a five-year extension with the Falcons. Based on contract terms reported by Chris Mortensen, Ryan will become the first player of the deal worth $100 million in guarantees at $30 million in average annual value. So uh, there are going to be people out there that says, come on, why are you giving a guy who's 32 years old that much money? And my uh, answer is always, what are you going to do? You have a team right now that can compete, Mm -hmm. compete for the title. You were in the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. So what's your alternative? You know, you have him, you have Julio Jones, you know, you have a fast defense. So two, last year was certainly a little bit, bit of an off year, especially early on for him, but mm-hmm. you, you have to, you have to do that. You have to keep him. You can't, you can't just say, Oh, that's too much. Cause then I say, who you getting yeah. while your window of opportunity is open, get somebody, you know, you have a good core of the team together. And I know it can hurt as cap. you go down the line, cap space. I get it, yeah. but man, you got to try and strike while the iron's hot. Ryan did, so congrats to him, his wife Sarah, the family, the kids, the whole deal. Right. Great for them, because a great guy. He always lo- and then adds to it, right? Yeah, Good yeah. citizen. Uh, so, Top five quarterback in the I, league. He's I, put up great numbers. I, it's, it's, you got to do it. Yeah. And now the Green Bay Packers are going to have to do it with Aaron Rodgers. Right. Yeah. Because Matt Ryan will be the highest paid for a while mm-hmm. until Aaron Rodgers signs his deal. Also in baseball last night, Albert Pujols doubling in the second inning of the Angels' 12-3 win over the Orioles, the 2,999th hit of his career. Albert will get his next chance to become the 32nd player to join the 3,000 hit club in Seattle. Angels visit the Mariners this weekend. The machine is going to get 3,000. How cool would it be to do it against Seattle and Ichiro? Because you've got that great Yeah, that, that is. First, you'd rather do it at home. It would have right. been nice if he, he did it at home. But if not, Ichiro in Seattle is going off the field now and going up into management. He hasn't ruled out playing next year, but he's not going to play anymore this year. What's interesting is in April of 2001, Pujols and Ichiro both made their debut and both got their very first hit. Hmm. Ichiro's over 3,000 and Pujols is going to get to 3,000. But how about that? Yeah. They debuted and got their first hit on the same day. That's pretty incredible. Also, Tiger Woods shot an even par 71 at the Wells Fargo <laughs> Championship at Quail Hollow yesterday. He hit 13 greens in regulation but needed 31 putts. Been six years since he played the event. He said the golf course a lot harder. It's a lot harder than when I played. See, look, I think we're going through what you thought you'd go through with with Tiger. Is he's just back into it. He's played some tournaments, but inconsistencies. Right, one tournament it's a driver, another tournament it's irons. Yesterday it's a putter. Yep. Thirty one putts he needs. He hit what thirteen greens and regulations, but needed thirty one putts. Said he wasn't reading the greens well, and he's played one hole today, and he's, he 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 parred that hole. So we'll see where it goes, but that's the whole thing about consistency, and that's what he said. I need to play tournaments mm-hmm. to get the whole games consistent. We'll talk to Michael Collins, a former uh, uh, caddy, and uh, and just he covers these tournaments. He's just a fantastic guy. There is something that went on with Tiger and his new irons that Michael Collins is going to explain that is going to blow your mind about how well athletes know the equipment that they are using. It's really amazing. It's a good tease. He's going to join us at 9.30 a.m. Eastern. For the record, Tiger parred the first hole today. So to keep it posting how he does. Golico Wingo is brought to you by GNC. Ignite what's inside you from building muscle to find the best multis. Get the highest quality wellness solutions and supplements. Now buy two, get one free for a limited time at GNC. Live well. Let's bring in our man Brian Winhorst, ESPN NBA insider who saw LeBron's greatness on full display last night. Wendy, read your column today. Excellent work as always. And I like the fact you pointed out LeBron was working on that fadeaway of practice. He knew instinctively, I'm going to need this. He saw the way the Raptors were defending him and leaving space. And then he went out and just crushed Toronto's will last night. Yeah, although I I sort of feel like there was a certain point where LeBron was like, I wonder how crazy I can get with this. I wonder if I shoot the ball 18 feet in the air, if it'll go in. I wonder if I turn to my left it'll go in i wonder if it'll turn to my right it'll it'll go in he was just completely having fun with them and uh, look there's going to be certain nights where lebron's just going to throw in shots and you're just going to have to shake your head and you know give it to him but this was extreme not only did he have a 43 point game which look the guy has already got four 40 point games in the playoffs he tied his career high with 14 assists i mean he, it frankly, felt like he was on vacation against the Raptors, especially after a series against the Pacers where everything the Cavs did was hard. The Raptors are making the Cavs feel very, very comfortable right now. So you've seen this guy play uh, from his high school days, obviously, to now. Have you seen anything like that, like that shooting last night from him in all those years? 
you know, Mike, frankly, with all due respect, uh, I don't think that that game really qualified much for LeBron because the Raptors made it so easy for him. Um, you know, uh, he didn't really have to work that hard. He had a he had just a, an, an unconscious night, but the Raptors didn't do anything to to make it to to make him feel him or anything. I mean, at halftime of the game, the Raptors were shooting sixty percent. They were on their home court in a game that should be pretty close to a desperation game, and the Cavs were down two points. LeBron was like, oh, this is how they're going to play me. They're going to just let us do whatever we want and move and go wherever we want without even any little bit of resistance. Okay, fine. We'll just play this way. And, uh, you know, also LeBron, you know, he had gotten some rest. He was so tired on Monday night in that overtime. He just could barely move. And the last two days, he really, really, um, you know, tried to go to sleep. He, he went to bed at 10 o'clock on Wednesday night. There was, you know, you know, Donovan Mitchell has that incredible dunk and the, the Jazz are having this great win down in Houston and his friends are texting him and there's no reply because he's sleeping at 10 p.m. and he got nine hours of sleep and he had all these massages and he doing all this ice and even yesterday in the morning, in the morning, he looked like he was taller than me. I, he might have grown a half inch just from resting, I feel like. And so the result was a rest of LeBron, who was very confident because he owns that building. I mean, the Cavs have won five straight playoff games in Toronto. Playoff games in Toronto, five. That's crazy. He, he's comfortable there. He doesn't care about any, any adversity. And he was rested, and he just you know took it to the Raptors like it was nothing. Toronto had not lost back-to-back home games all season, and now the series feels effectively over. Talking to Brian Windhorst right now on Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio and ESPN News. Any chance for Toronto? Obviously, it's desperation time, and it feels like now it's a greater chance of a sweep, Windy, than a six- or seven-game series. But what on earth can Dwayne Casey do to shake things up? Well, the first thing he's got to do is somebody's got to put an arm bar in somebody's back. Somebody's got to commit a foul. I mean, <laughs> the, Indiana, the Indiana Pacers have to be at home just slapping their foreheads, going... Uh, we'd be up 202 because the Indiana Pacers gave the Cavs so much more physical play. And that's the first, that's where they got to start. They cannot let the Cavs skip up and down the court like they were. Um, but I will say this, you know, this Cavs team, um, they are not a consistent team. They have been inconsistent all year long. Uh, now they have had moments where they've had incredibly hot two week stretches. And maybe we're at the start of one, and maybe this is the Cavs about to flex their muscles and show why they. a lot of people were assumed that they would just be back in the finals no matter what. And maybe they'll tear through this series, and they'll just wait for whoever wins Boston and Philly and go to work on them. But the only thing I'd say to the Raptors is this is not the same Cavs team as it's been the last three years. So, you know, you can get back in the series, but not playing with a lack of fight that they played with last night. More than anything, is as awesome as LeBron was, and it was a joy to watch him play that way, I was flabbergasted at the absolute lack of fight for this Raptors team, which has spent 12 months working to get back in this situation, to get home court, to establish a great home court, to defend it. They didn't defend it, my God. Brian Windhorst joining us on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. I want to get to that consistency thing in a second, but here in the first two games, LeBron James, forgetting the points, has 27 assists and just three turnovers. Now, where he is struggling uh, ever since they called him for a lane violation for stepping <laughs> over the, the line before the ball hits the rim, in the two games, he's 5 of 14. He better be careful or he's going to get benched uh, from the free throw <laughs> shooting. <laughs> going to the consistency part of it now, uh, Brian, is we've seen inconsistency, obviously, with the other players. Uh, Hill gets four points in the first game, 13 in the second. Love, seven points in 31. The only consistent one in both games has been J.R. Smith and Jeff Green. How much of a concern is that for you going forward? Forgetting this series, because we all think it's over, but going forward is the consistency of the teammates. Well, that just just shows you how crazy the playoffs are in general, because LeBron made 25 straight free throws the last round. And now he, 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 you know, he's he has all of a sudden off calibration, and he's missed nine in two games. Uh, and by the way, last night, guys, he was annoyed 
that uh, he 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 fumbled the ball out of bounds and had a turnover. He was he was mentioning as he was leaving the press conference that he should have had a turnover free game, but he just you know wasn't that anybody stole the ball from him. He had an unforced error. So that just tells you where they are there. But so here's what I'd circle with the Cavs. Uh, they still, despite uh, everything that happened last night, they still gave up 54% shooting, and the Raptors scored 62 per, uh, points in the paint. Okay, uh, they are not a good defensive team, and one of the things that Ty Lewis has just decided is that okay, we're not good defensively. We're just going to put out our best offensive team, and we're going to outscore you. That's why Tristan Thompson isn't in any of these game plans until it's like break the glass time because <laughs> Tristan Thompson isn't a great offensive player. And basically, uh, the, you know, Ty Lue's like, we're just going to outscore you. And that's why like, yesterday at half, when, it's, when the Raptors are shooting 60% and, only, and the Cavs are right on their heels, like, this is fine. We'll, we'll score with you all night. And the Cavs are a top three offensive team. They're a bottom three defensive team. So where they cut into problems is when they absolutely have to get stops. They haven't demonstrated that against an elite level offense that they can absolutely get stops. And I do think that that's eventually eventually going to come up against a team where that's going to be too much for them to overcome. And that's one of the reasons why they're inconsistent because they're not good defensively. Uh, they're not the same team they were two years ago when they won the title game seven, 2016, the Warriors scored 89 points that night. The final score was 93, 89. I don't think this team is capable of holding the Warriors to 89 points in a game, maybe not even in three quarters. And so that's really the difference and why this team isn't quite where they were a few years ago. Dr. Brian Windhorst right now on Gullick and Wingo, ESPN Radio and ESPN News. We transition from the Raptors debacle to Phillies. You know, for a team that's been terrible for a long time and won one playoff series, they're an awfully mouthy bunch, Wendy. Last night, Ben Simmons <laughs> took four shots and didn't get a point. It was, it got one point. How does that happen? Well, so Brad Stevens is decided that the most important thing in this series is to keep the ball out of Ben Simmons' hands, to force the ball out of his hands, and to keep him from being a playmaker. And if that means that Joel Embiid has a 40-point game and yaps and talks on Instagram and everything, Brad is fine with it. And, in fact, after Embiid had a great game one and the Sixers lost and Embiid was sort of running his mouth, I'm sure Brad was like, go for it. Hey, uh, you, you know, you're right. We will never stop you. Try for 50 because when the ball's in Embiid's hands, it's not in their best playmaker's hands. And, and they've thrown some things at Simmons that he's never seen before. Uh, for example, uh, sometimes they just want the ball out of his hands. And even if there's not a screen, they just go double team him. You know, sometimes they get like the 15 on the clock and they're like, we don't want Ben Simmons to do anything in this possession. So we're going to go double team him and make him give up the ball. And if Brand Stevens was speaking 100% honestly to you, he would probably say, look, we may not be able to pull this stuff against this guy a year from now. Maybe we won't even be able to pull this stuff against this guy in game five or game six. But we're going to throw stuff he's never seen before, and we're going to take advantage of him being young and, and innocent and not knowing how to handle this adversity. That's, you know, in, in a way, and I know this is hard to see, and everybody wants to make fun of Ben Simmons because he only had one point and rookie of the year. What's really happening is Brad Stevens is paying him an incredible compliment that no matter what's happening on that roster, that he sees Ben Simmons as the real threat and the heart of that team, and they're throwing a LeBron-esque game plan at trying to deal with him. And I do believe he'll get over it. Uh, the question is now whether he'll figure it out and whether Brett Brown can help him figure it out in time to win this series. All right, Brian, after the Knicks had 637 interviews, they decide on David Fisdale. Uh, and so from your side of it, why will this work? Or why won't this work? Well, first off, Fisdale is, was the most in-demand coach out there. He could have had the Suns job. He probably could have had the Orlando job or the Atlanta job or the Charlotte job if he really wanted them. Um, Milwaukee was lining up to interview him as well. Milwaukee was very interested in him. So this wasn't so much that, that, that the Knicks selected Fisdale. This was Fisdale selecting the Knicks. And the reason why he is in demand is because he comes from uh, a system in Miami where they lo learn, where he learned a culture and an incredible coaching technique from Eric Spolstra. I would call Eric Spolstra the mechanic 
the way he uh, gets in there and, and fine tunes and changes things and, and sets a, a tone for his organization. And David Fisdale was there for all of that. And I was there every day for four years with David Fisdale when those Heat teams were, were great. And Fisdale won the respect of so many players. Um, and so th- not only is he a, a guy who relates to players, but he also has been taught the technical side of the game. And to be able to find a coach who is technically intelligent and knows how to set a culture but also can relate to players is valuable. And that's what the Knicks ultimately really wanted. That said, there is a bit of a gamble here because Fisdale is still a young head coach, and he hasn't proven at the highest level. He A lot of people felt like he got a raw deal in Memphis, but part of what happened was he – is for being a player's coach, he couldn't connect with his star player and Mark Gasol. And he went sideways and he got fired. And if he goes sideways with the star in New York, that's going to be a problem. So um, it's a, it's a good hire because it's kind of like winning a sweepstakes for the Knicks, but he hasn't been a guy who's proven he can do it yet. And there's some uncertainty because of it. One last fun one for you here, Wendy, the NBA warning Drake about his language. Do players actually like hanging with Drake before, during, after the game? They talk to him all the time. They probably text him and stuff. But uh, if you are, you know, this year for some reason, and I'm sure it's because stuff's happened recently, every courtside fan gets a placard on their seat. And it's kind of a little bit of a, of a Valentine at first. They're like, oh, you're a very important, important fan for us, and thank you for your business. But, hey, uh, you've got to have some decorum here. And if you don't, I, we don't care how much you pay for the seats. We're going to throw you out. And so I think it was the NBA warning Drake as a front row fan, hey, don't yell at players and curse at players and come towards the court more than it was warning him as the Raptors' global ambassador or whatever. I will point out, though, that Drake once got fined 25000 bucks for tampering with Kevin Durant during a uh, concert when Durant was going to be a free agent. And they said the Raptors, he was out of line. So I also think that the league likes to have a little playful back and forth because they know that it gets people like you guys interested in it and it's fun. And I think uh, that's one of the things that happened here. Great stuff as always from Brian Windhorse, ESPN NBA insider. Appreciate the insight. Safe travels, my man. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, guys. Take care. Hey everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Golick Wingo podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Ryan! I don't know how else to say this, so I'll just say it. What is it, Linda? I think we should see other people. Are you breaking up with me on a roller coaster? Well, we do have a lot of fun. Maybe we should stay together. An emotional roller coaster? Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. I just need a little me time. Ah! GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Alan Jackson earlier, a little dance music now. Cliff mm-hmm. really just runs the gamut here when it comes to music. Adnan Verkin working for Trey Regolik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. As always, we're presented by Progressive Insurance. More NBA talk and some NFL sprinkled in in just a second with next question. But a story earlier that Mike yep. and I were fascinated by because who doesn't like a little free money? State police saying drivers clamor to pick up cash on an interstate in Indianapolis after the back doors of a Brinks armored truck swung open and hundreds of thousands of dollars flew out. That's right. Six hundred grand. Money was flying everywhere. It was like kind of a movie. You had bills, loose bills flying all over the interstate, vehicles stopping, people getting out of their cars, jumping fences, and stuff in their pockets. With Unreal. So imagine that scene. You're driving down the highway and there's, you see a, a money flying everywhere. You stop your car, grab money. People, are, as Adnan mentioned, are jumping over their fences from the neighborhood, grabbing money. Our question is, you giving the money back? Because they did say, the police said, if you're caught with this and don't give it back, you can be prosecuted. We don't know if they're going to prosecute or not. Mm. We have no idea. Depends on the amount. But would you give the money back? This is that morality question. It's not your money. You know exactly whose money it is. It's not like it's it's on the street there for a week right. and you have no idea where it fell. You know whose money it is. Are you keeping it? 
or are you not? We've been taking your tweets at uh, Golik and Wingo. Phone number is 860-506-5505 to leave a message. And we have an interesting voicemail already about the Brinks truck. Okay, yeah, this is Terry down in South Carolina. I appreciate all of the nice, kind words of Mike Golick, and I love Adnan Vert's face. As they both lie like they wouldn't jump off the truck, then grab every piece of money and turn around looking in the sky like, Jesus, is that you? I'm keeping the money. You guys are great. <laughs> well done. <laughs> That's an epic voicemail. That right? is a voicemail right there. If we get voicemails like that, our, our work here is done. We'll just play all those. By the way, Prod also chiming yeah. in. This is Monopoly come to life. Bank error in your favor. Right. Collect two hundred dollars. Yeah, it's just a gift from above. We've had somebody say that if they if they got three hundred dollars, they'd give some of it back and make it look like they're giving, giving money back. Keep the rest. But most are just saying, "Hey, that money's insured. I'm keeping it, man. I, I'm, I'm I'm not." You know, and my thought, my uh, one thought is there are cameras everywhere. Yes. Do you get busted? You're scared about being caught. Will they? Well, no, I'm just saying. I'm just throwing it out. I'm keeping the money. (laughs) (laughs) Let's make this clear. Golik is not worried about. But what I'll be smart enough to do is hide my face while I'm grabbing the money. Exactly. (laughs) Cover the eyes. Then they'll just zero in on my license plate (laughs) as my car is stopped and my door is open like hundreds of other people. Oh, it's a fun dilemma to have. Yeah. Keep those tweets and those voicemails coming. We appreciate it. All right. Next question is brought to you by GNC. Ignite what's inside you at GNC. Buy two, get one free for a limited time. GNC, live well. Well, music, Cliffy, whatever your next question music is. Thank you, buddy. Which team is a bigger... Oh, God. I don't want to answer this. Which team is a bigger mental hurdle to get over? The Raptors against the Cavs or the Capitals against the Penguins? Wow. Now, the Capitals, I said this, they're one of those teams, until they win, you don't believe they can win. They're kind right. of like the Washington Nationals. Until they get to where they're supposed to get to, I'm not buying it. If the Caps had won last night, won convincingly, up 3-1, I'd still say, well, i got to see more. i got to see them win. And the Raptors, obviously, they can't beat the Cavs. They're down 0-2. So I'm going to say it's the Raptors. It's mentally they know the shell shock, but honestly, the Caps is another huge well, one. Plus, they can, one of the different there is while certainly That's... Toronto has some all stars, right. Ovechkin's one of the best players in the game, right? No doubt about it. And I mean, just keep falling short time after time after time. Right. That is a great question, though. Yeah. Uh, I might even lean toward the Caps on this one. All right. Because the crazy thing is, each team has lost three straight years in the playoffs to the other team. Yeah. And Pittsburgh just has Washington's number. Game five is going to be tomorrow night. Uh, if you'd have been the amount of money that mattered to you, would you bet on or against Matt Ryan ever winning a Super Bowl? Man, uh, 28 to three. I was going to say, against. So I mean, listen, I, he's a great guy. He's a great quarterback. I'm happy he got paid. But 28 to three, like they had their chance. They squandered it. You know, you, Eagles are coming back you, again. You look at that conference. You have Philadelphia. You yeah. have Aaron Rodgers coming back. Green Bay. You, you have the Rams. You have yeah. Minnesota. You have New Orleans. That is a, a tough, tough conference. Falcons, a playoff team, but by no I, means a favorite. I think they are as well. Uh, especially with Julio, Matt Ryan, the old line wasn't what they were a couple of years ago. We know that defense is built on speed. I think I'm going to bet against. Yeah. I think they're going to be there and have the shot to say, "Oh, can Atlanta do it again this year?" But if you're making me put any amount, any amount of your money on this, okay. I'm going to say no. True or false? The Knicks got it right with David Fisdale. Take that for data. I'm going to say true. He's 43 I, yeah, years I old. Mean, he was highly coveted by five other teams. Yeah. Maybe all five other teams are wrong as well for coveting him. But he won championships in Miami. Like you said, he has a great reputation with young players. Didn't work out Marcus Marcus The right, one-loss right. record is not enticing. But in the Knicks, if he can just keep Porzingis there, keep your star happy, yeah. then I like it. I think everything about him you like and you say is a positive. I, I do agree with that. Yeah. Again, I don't know how much in the Knicks really brass, really made it known, this guy's got to be able to understand the player of today. You know, I... I right. I think, think that's overused at times. Sure. I really do. I, I, I'm not saying it shouldn't be part of the process. Yeah. But I do think it can be overused. But I like, listen, I may be a little biased, so I like the guy a lot and getting to know him a little bit. I think he's sure. a great guy. And, and outside, again, yeah. Marcus All, yeah. I think most players yeah. do like him. So did they get it right? Hey, we'll let you know in a few years. But if you want me to answer right now, I'll say, yeah, they did. Other reason I like it, Mike, the other candidates, aside from Mark Jackson, who I would have been fine with as well, uninspiring. I mean, the likes of David Blatt, Mike yeah. Woodson, they could have brought back again. You know what? Either Fizdale or Mark Jackson, I would have thought the Knicks got it. And right. by the way, again, 12th coach since 2001, uh, Jeff Van Gundy yeah. to now. Van Gundy, that, that one in 2001 when he, when he resigned, and Fisdale are the only two, they're the bookends now, the only two 
that did not play in the NBA. All the coaches in between did, including a couple of Hall of Famers and Lenny Wilkins and Isaiah Thomas. So mm-hmm. to non, non-NBA non guys, this is your second one in that string. And to your point about the value of communication and young coaches, this is courtesy of Brett, nine of the youngest 11 coaches this season, nine of the 11 youngest, either fired or didn't make the playoffs. The six oldest all did make the playoffs. There you go. So, Thank you, Brett, for having a stat back yeah. up what I'm saying. Yeah, a little experience goes a long way. There you go. Best career, Ichiro. Albert Pujols, Ichiro, by the way, hanging him up yesterday, although he's not officially done playing. For now, he's going to be in the front office. The Mariners could come back next year at some point. Albert Pujols, who's about to get 3,000 hits, is one of the top five right-hand hitters of all time. Or when it's all said and done, you want to put your chips on Mike Trout. Two-time MVP. He's finished second three times. 306 hitter, turns 27 in August, over 1,000 hits. Wow. Easy pick is Pujols or Ichiro for that matter because of what they've done. I'm going Trout. Trout. I'm going with Trout as well. Top five and top two MVP the The, first five years. The guy not talked about enough at all, right? Yeah. I mean, does not get talked about. It's, he's almost like that. Oh yeah guy is the best player, uh, in the league. So I'm willing to bet on his future. Yes. But if Ichiro and Pujols, man, I mean, just because, you know, Ichiro could hit the ball anywhere in the park you wanted him to, mm-hmm. Pujols could hit it out of the park <laughs> all the time. So, you know, and there's that, you know, you know, chicks dig the long ball thing. Everybody loves that home run. Right. But, you know, obviously he was a batting champ as well, a home run leader a couple of times. I would lean toward Pujols just because of the power aspect of it. Yep. But I'm with you. Overall, I'm betting on Trout. And lastly, the signature drink of the Kentucky Derby yep. is the mint julep. Yes, it is. Your signature drink. Well, first and foremost, I do not like the mint julep at all. What's it? It's bourbon, it's yeah. sugar, it's mint leaves crushed up in water. That's right. Okay? Mm-hmm. Not a, I don't, I've had it. We've been, not, yeah. we were out at the Derby a couple of times, you know, Greeny and I, and when we were uh, doing Mike and Mike, we went out there and did our show out there. So, yeah. listen, when in Rome, right? Sure. So I certainly, I had my share of yep. them. I didn't really like them. Wasn't your thing. Now, normally I would say beer. Yeah, just any I am, Canadian, Labatt. People, people always say, I don't care. People always say, well, what's your favorite beer? And it's I said beer, the one yeah. that has barley and hops in it and, and alcohol <laughs> content. Uh, cause I, I like any beer. Yeah. But I've really gotten into, and it's my daughter, Sydney, who kind of got me going on it, the Moscow Mule. Oh, okay. What's that concoction? That, that's, well, you can, I mean, there's, it, it's vodka and, um, oh. and, uh, uh, ginger beer. Jalapeno you know, that, peppers in there. No, no oh, jalapeno okay. peppers. I'll pro Lime right. juice, uh, but, but it's, it's that, it's that, um, the beer, the ginger beer that really kind of gives it that, that fizz and it was good. Yeah. And you could put, you could put, uh, tequila in there or vodka, whatever, you know, there's different things, but I'm digging that now. Okay. Uh, if not that, any beer. How about you? You know, I'm going to go with, uh, muscle milk because we have it right here and I'm kind of late to the party on it because, you know, it's got, no, zero sugar? Well, of protein? I mean, if you look at your body, you are late to the party on it. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Come on, that was a good one. I want to ask more about the Derby, though, because yeah. I, I used to always think the Derby is something you got to go to, <laughs> top five sporting event. And I've asked a couple of people. My brother used to live in Madisonville, yeah, Kentucky. Yeah. He goes, I'll be honest, man. It's essentially just a big booze fest. Well, that's no reason not to go, but honestly, right, everyone right. just gets blitzed and you don't win any money. That's it. It's not like Wimbledon. I want to know <laughs> of the people that go there and... and and are in that infield area. Do you see the race? I mean, by, no, the, by the time the race goes off, how hammered are you <laughs> to even see the race? I mean, and then you got to, then when it's over, now it's done. What are you going home? You're leaving? No, you're just yeah. passing out somewhere? What are you doing? I mean, what a mess it's got to be. But I heard it's fantastic. Yeah. You know, you, you know, I'm talking about the people in the infield, not where sure. Tom Brady and everybody is, you know, yeah. up in the, the million dollar club and stuff like that. Right. Do, do, do those people see the race? I don't think Because do, it man. is an all day thing. That race is until what? Six something at night, right? Yeah, Five forty. And, and you're there all there. day long. Six forty. Just, just getting hammered. Oh. So yeah, I, I'm with you. So no thanks for me. I think, th- I think though, tomorrow I may take a ride down to the casino and sit in the, uh, Throw a the, few the sports on? book there and uh, hang out and, uh, you know. Last on the derby. Do you like dressing up though? That no. part of it? No, you don't even. I don't like dressing up for anything. <laughs> There is nothing in this you world that. that you could say, hey, you want to get dressed? No, yeah, I don't want to dress up. You want to put a sucker on, a no, polo dye? Like, absolutely not. I'd not, thanks. I would love to go to the Kentucky Derby in shorts, t-shirt, and a hat. Right. That'd and a be ball good for cap. Me. Not, not, not a big No, that's hat. exactly right. Yeah, Just yeah. a ball cap. <laughs> Amen. NBA playoffs are on ESPN Radio. Tune in tonight as Anthony Davis and the Pelicans host the Warriors, presented by Barbasol Razors. Coverage begins at 7.30 p.m. <laughs> Eastern on most ESPN radio stations. AARP can help you become your healthiest self. It's why we offer health tips for your body and your brain. So take on today and every day with AARP. Learn how at takeontoday.aarp. 
at Invert is a huge movie buff. Cinephile podcast Appreciate with our own it. Daniel Stanzik right there. Yeah. By the way, I think that's the only time Stanzik ever smiles is when he works on Cinephile. <laughs> They're working on this show, yeah. which is understandable, Stanzik. I want to be clear about that. He has confessed to me. He's hoping Cinephile goes five days a week. <laughs> Why? Well, by the way, his reaction means he actually said that to you. You totally outed him. He could have like brushed it off. He's like, oh my God, I can't believe he just said that. Sports Center brought to you by 1-800-Flowers.com this Mother's Day. Distance doesn't mean anything because you can still brighten her day with 24 multicolored roses for $24 from 1-800-Flowers.com. You want to order, just go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click that radio icon, enter the code WINGO. It's not that Dan Stanzik isn't invested in going to Wingo. He just really loves Cinephile. He really does. He does. That's the way to do it. The rare times he smiles is when he's dealing with you in Cinephile. <laughs> Still haven't got my cinephile shirt. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're still working. We're efforting yeah. that at some point. We're going to get that to Mike. Mm-hmm, whatever. You lost so much weight. we got to get oh, on the picture. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> nice, nice excuse. <laughs> the double XLs. Uh, Marty Smith's going to join us 20 minutes from now. But another fun story I wanted to pass along. By the way, not that uh, we're going to get more NBA at the top there. LeBron, obviously, torching the Raptors. Celtics are now looking for the team to beat against Philadelphia. But All that doesn't matter. I was going to say, you know, all that, all that aside, Swedish meatballs are not Swedish. I mean, listen. It's one of the easiest things to say. Oh, I had a Swedish meatball. They're fantastic. Oh, Swedish meatball. Swedish meatball. Or from Sweden, right? It's a Swedish meatball. What would think? It's not. Where's it from, Adnan? Turkey. Turkey. King Charles XII brought home a recipe from Turkey in the early 18th century. It's unbelievable. Like, the Turkish were getting ripped off. Swedish meatballs all this time. It's Turkish meatballs. And I'm tired of it. Yep. Uh, we brought back, as you mentioned, a country 300 years ago. King Charles XII spent five years in Turkey during the Great Northern War between Sweden and Russia in the early 1700s. I remember it well. So, I uh, do? No, no. <laughs> so, Jeopardy question. Yeah. So basically it's a let's stick to the facts moment for Turkey and saying, those meatballs, everybody's calling them Swedish meatballs, those are ours. Let's give us a little credit for it. How about that? We want credit. We want, do, do, do we have to call them now Turkish meatballs? Can we no I, longer say Swedish meatballs? I don't think you should. I mean, technically. I mean, could... is there a patent on that? I wonder, or is it just kind of one of those things that's accepted that it's a Swedish meatball? And if you try to now call it a, Tur- uh, a Turkish meatball, even though right. correct, could Sweden sue because they have the patent on it? Could you have a patent on it anymore <laughs> if you now found out that in re- in reality yeah. it's from Turkey? It removes the patent. That's what wow. I think. Wow. Do you think it does, doesn't it? Because IKEA, which I mean, as Swedish as it gets, there you go. sell over two million meatballs in the in-store restaurants yeah. every day. Every, every not every year, gang. Every day. Two million. Every day, two million Turkish meatballs. <laughs> Do this they have to rule. change the name on the menu? Will people from Turkey make people change the name everywhere to, say, Turkish meatballs? They should. People will be confused at first, but eventually they'll adjust. They'll go, Do you have any Swedish meatballs? No, we have the Turkish ones. No Swedish? No, the Turkish is the no, same. No, I don't one. want Turkish. I want Swedish. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll get the meatballs. Wow. <laughs> Could be a mess for a while until we work into a new groove. Yep. Oh. Congrats to the Turks. King Charles the <laughs> Twelfth getting it done. Brought the recipe in from Turkey. There you go. The other story we were mentioning earlier was about the Brinks trucks. This was in Indianapolis. The bags of money falling out of the back of a Brinks truck, Interstate seventy on Wednesday. Six hundred thousand dollars had flown across the interstate. Police later said the exact amount was not known. But listen, over half a grand. Yeah, half a million. Half a million. Excuse me. The question <laughs> we're asking all of you: Tweet us at Golkawingo or leave us a voicemail. Would you keep the money, or would you return it? Here's some voicemails of people weighing it. No, you can't keep it because I tell you a story. The one time when I lived in San Diego, I was riding my bike. I saw a guy drop two dollars half a mile down the road. I had a flat tire. Karma is a you know what. So that's my story. Now listen, just because one wow. time you had a flat tire. Plus, plus, that's plus that's here's good. the thing: it was two bucks. You saw the guy who dropped it, <laughs> yeah, so I would feel more guilty because you knew who who it was. It belonged to him. It's a brink truck, man. You don't know where that money is. And it's insured. It's exactly right. We have time for another one? Play yeah. another one. Go ahead. No, I'm not going to be worried that someone's going to, you know, track me down and, and find me. And I can buy my mom a nice Mother's Day gift. There you go. Thanks. That would be the question for those. Take the money, give it to charity. So, But that would be a question for those that are on the fence about it, but you end up taking it. How much would the guilt follow you each day? Would you be waiting for... That phone call from the area code that you don't know, that knock on the door, nice. did somebody find out? Am I going to be found out? Am I going to get into trouble? How much would you worry? That would definitely weigh on you. Because th- you'll, you'll get all kinds. Some that will worry, some that won't worry, and some some that, uh, you know, I, I just have, have no clue. We'll get one more in quick. 
Hey, if you can come out in two big bags and land on the back seat of my car, I'm keeping the whole darn thing. Depending on how much I get, it's going to be dinner. It could be it could be a car. Who knows? But I'm 100% keeping it. And for your one guy that says he's giving it back, if that money's all sudden in his hand, he might be changing his mind. So he's flat out calling Cliff a liar. Because yeah. Cliff is the only one on this show that said that he would give the money back. Crazy. Cliff's a liar. We figured that yeah, out. Yes, Cliff's Coming a liar. Up, we're going live at Churchill Downs. Marty Smith holding the mint and julep. Go like a wingo here. Liar. Radio. liar. Mother's Day's just around the corner. And while brunches are being booked and trips are being planned, there's a lot of us who won't be able to make it to celebrate with mom. With 1-800-Flowers.com, distance doesn't mean anything because you can still brighten your day with a beautiful bouquet. Right now, when you get ahead of the Mother's Day rush, 1-800-Flowers is giving you an exclusive 24 for 24 offer. 24 multicolored roses for 24 bucks. That's only a dollar a rose. With a bright and beautiful mix of premium roses and a rainbow of colors, these blooms are guaranteed to show mom just how much she's loved. Multicolored roses are the perfect way to surprise all of the moms in your life. Wife, aunt, sister, grandma. Roses from 1-800-Flowers are picked at their peak from Premier Farms and shipped overnight to ensure freshness. 24 multicolored roses for only 24 bucks. It's an amazing offer. But you got to hurry because it expires today. Just pick your delivery date and 1-800-Flowers will handle the rest. Don't put this off. Order today from 1-800-Flowers.com. It's what mom would want you to do. To order 24 stunning multicolored roses for only 24 bucks, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash Wingo. That's 1-800-Flowers.com slash Wingo. Great news. There's a quick way you can save money. Switch to GEICO. GEICO could help you get great coverage at a great price. And it only takes 15 minutes to see if you could save 15% or more on car insurance. Go to GEICO.com today and see how much you could save. Second round series in Boston. The Celtics would rally from 22 down. Throws here for Jason Tatum. Right hand dribble loses. Oh! Back to Pete and throws it down hard with a violent right hand slam. It's hard for me to, to go against the Celtics at this point. Are you taking them? Well, no, I'm going to stick with the Sixers. There we go. How can we possibly be surprised anymore? The Celtics have done it again. Don't know who this is in reference to, or maybe just Canadian music. Nelly Furtado, that's what you're looking at, yeah. That's Promis- what we're doing, yeah. yeah. Promiscuous we're, we're, girl. We're doing some things that are good coming out of Canada because no, it's not basketball. <laughs> I never get for trade today. It's Golik and Wing on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. As always, we're presented by Progressive Insurance. All of our phone guests on the Shell Pencil Performance Line. Yesterday, I made an embarrassment of myself and wore this baseball jersey. We the North for those listening on the radio, those watching ESPN News. And I promised Mike if the Raptors would fold and capitulate, which they did, you can do whatever you want with it. I, by the way, I don't know if you saw the back. You got the six there. It's pretty cool. No, Break. it's not because you don't have. Yeah. <laughs> so either you can uh, you can light six, this on whatever. fire. Or the, no, uh, no, I want to take it. I want to do sure. we the northeast Ohio. Uh, please, by all means, you do that's where like Cleveland that. is in northeast Ohio. So I'll add my lettering to this, and I'll be wearing it. <laughs> Just get that out of my way now, uh-huh. please. Yeah. Marty Smith's going to join us about ten minutes from now, hopefully with a mint julep, and set the scene for the Kentucky Derby. But honestly, when it comes to what's trending, it's really quite simple. LeBron James was spectacular again last night. 43 points, 14 assists. The Cavs beat the Raptors 128 to 110 to take a 2 0 series lead. And here's what was amazing, Mike. The Raptors shoot 60%. And they're right. only up by two points the half. And that third quarter, the second Cleveland makes a surge, you just felt Toronto yep. capitulate and wilt. And OG Ananobi and company had no answer for LeBron. And the fadeaways were amazing. I'd never seen LeBron. Channeling Kobe, MJ, Dirk Nowitzki, seven fadeaways. Crazy to see him so successful. And as Brian Windhorst said, he was practicing those pregame. Like, you know what? I'm going to pull this one out of the repertoire tonight yeah. and do it because that, that's one of the ways usually you'd play LeBron is let him take his jump shot. In this case, the fadeaway. Don't let him drive to the hoop, which was exactly what he did in most of the first half. But, you know, we're going to bring this up in the second game as well. To me, the key moment, you just mentioned it, halftime. Cleveland makes a run at the end of the half, gets it to within two. Toronto's shooting 60%, but how confident are you walking into the locker room? Wait a minute. We had a bigger lead. We're not only up two, and we've been shooting 60%. So it comes down how you're coming out in that third quarter, 37-24 in favor of Cleveland. And you, you, as you mentioned, and you just saw it, you just saw the eyes get wide, the wilting a little bit, you know, the occasional, I'm going to really try and go to the hoop here, but shot after shot missed. And not only was LeBron making his shots, Kevin Love, you know, scored 31, Jeff Green's knocking down shots. It just all piled on them to just saying, here we go again. It's happened three years in a row. We can't beat the big brother. LeBronto. Mark Jones with the call last night, native of Toronto, who kind of has disavowed himself of being Canadian. I'll get into that story another time. LeBronto. You call him a front runner is what no, you're doing. But no, but Mark Jones, because people call him Canadian, he goes, no, I was born in Toronto, but I'm a proud American. I've lived here for 25 years, et cetera. I'm like, 
oh, that's great that you love America, but you yeah. are still Canadian. He's like, no, I'm, I'm an American. All like, right, front runner. He's a front runner. <laughs> Pretty much says it all. <laughs> well, here's the best number in terms of front runners. LeBron's teams have won all 21 best of seven series when they won the first two games. Good night. And, he and, owns the Toronto Raptors. And, and by the way, his two games, he has 27 assists and just three turnovers. And one of them <laughs> last night was in the ball bounce off his foot and he was ticked about it. That turnover. But that's incredible. A that's nine to one assist stat. to turnover ratio. Amazing. Mind boggling. Yeah. Also amazing. And honestly, if it wasn't for LeBron and Cleveland, we'd be talking more about this today. Boston Celtics, who you and I said a few weeks ago, after all the injuries, said, listen, they'll probably win a round, and that's about it. They're not going to win the second round. It's not going to happen. Well, now they're up 2-0. They erased a 22-point second-quarter deficit, beat the Philadelphia 76ers 108-103, to and it's a balanced attack because the Stars are not there, at least the Stars we knew about. Six Celtics scored in double figures. Obviously, Jalen Brown gave them a boost, 13 points off the bench as return from the hamstring injury. But the Sixers now are going to tell you, listen, as long as we win our two at home, that's fine. Right, right. But I don't think anyone expected Boston to win the first two. And Ben Simmons to score just one point on four shots. You know, that that's the weakest part of his game, jump shooting, and everybody knows that. And they mm-hmm. just keep saying, boy, when he gets that, how good is he going to be? Well, not only didn't he do it last night, he didn't look like he wanted to do it after a while uh, last night. But this was another one. 22 points ahead. The run Boston made at the end of the half was incredible. They got themselves to within five after Philly was up 22. So again, how do you go into the locker room? What adjustments do you make? How do you come out of the locker room? 28-19 in in favor of Boston in the third quarter. So they just took it to Philly. Maybe that talk about Philly was a little early. And I don't blame them for talking some, even though they hadn't accomplished anything, because they were looking good. Everybody was talking about them. Maybe you believe your own clippings a little bit there. and, uh, And in all honesty, if you step back and look at the playoffs, the Celtics should be the talk of the playoffs. Doing what they're doing without the players that are hurt. It's Terry incredible. Rozier, one of the guys who's definitely stepped up for them. Physicality, us being tough and getting stops. I mean, once we start getting stops and pushing the ball, uh, it was it was history from then. Obviously, at the beginning of the game, they were scoring. They was doing whatever they want, pushing us, pushing us out. Uh, you know, that's just part of the game. Them being physical, but we had to, we had to um, settle down and, and and be tougher with the ball and things like that. We was turning the ball over, but you know, we, we got it together. That's part of the big three in Boston: Rozier, Horford, and Tatum. <laughs> Just what you're thinking about when you think of Celtics, that's the big three, but it is right now. You mentioned Tatum, by the way. Dr. J. Cliff saw this. He said, you know, in hindsight, we probably yeah. should have picked yeah. Jason Tatum rather I'm, than Markel Fultz. Hindsight's always 20 going to be like a Ben Simmons rookie next year. Yeah. the entire year. Imagine yeah. if they had Tatum on that team. Yeah. By the way, Cliff going to be in the building for Game 3 tomorrow night. That's huge. Are you going to be filing reports for the show? Or just... Nah, I, I mean, maybe. I might I might do a little video or two for the yeah. Instagram account. Do but, you? Are yeah. you a fan that if this one isn't looking good, do you leave early? No. What? No. I paid good money for that seat, so I will be staying the whole entire so time. So you, you're staying because you paid good money for the seat, or you're a big-time Philadelphia <laughs> both. fan? How about both? Can uh, it be both? Uh, yeah, you could be both. Uh, but it's just you mentioned the money thing first. Yeah. I, I, for, I gotta get a picture of my boy Meek too. Well, so. you and Meek are gonna be there together. So. <laughs> yeah. And Meek Kevin Mill. Hart. And Kevin Hart. Out of prison just to see everybody. Now, okay, you're gonna have to just go ahead and see yourself out. <laughs> Lastly, <laughs> hockey last night. The playoffs have been great. Jake Gensel scored two goals. Penguins won 3-1 to even their series against the Capitals at two games each. Talking about mental hurdles. The Raptors cannot beat the Cavaliers. The Capitals wow. can be the Penguins at least in a series. Gensel has scored at least 10 goals each of his two postseason appearances. Mario Lemieux, the only other player to score at least 10 goals in his first two playoff appearances. Even if Washington had gone up 3-1 today, Mike, I would have said, show me once they win it, because I don't believe in them. Against Pittsburgh, I don't. Still looking over their shoulder, and for Alex Alex Ovechkin, he had four straight games with a goal. Last night, not a shot. From four straight games with a goal to not a shot. Also, Predators win 2-1. Uh, against the Jets, they uh, tie up that series Jason at two games apiece. Yeah, very fired up about that one. And, and a great point Eddie Olchick made earlier, may not be major cities, Nashville and Winnipeg, right. but two great families. Yeah, so if you're right. a hockey fan, you're watching that series, it has certainly lived up to well, Who that. doesn't like to drink beer out of a catfish? <laughs> no matter what, you're going to be happy. Yeah. Baseball season is underway. Tune in tomorrow for an NL Central rivalry as Anthony Rizzo and the Cubs visit the Cardinals presented by Barbasol Razors. Coverage begins at 1.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio, ESPNRadio.com, and the ESPN app. Also, Cubs-Cardinals is going to be the Sunday night baseball matchup where Buster only and the crew will be. And I'm actually going to be in Monterey, Mexico, Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock Eastern for the game. Padres-Dodgers So very excited with all the baseball action this weekend. Now time for our boy, Marty Smith. 
Golgan Wingo with you on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. The one-man celebration. The Marty Party continues. <laughs> Marty Smith. Well, good morning, boys. That's right. The party's in town. Marty Smith's America. The podcast downloaded and subscribe on the ESPN app. Uh, yeah, man. Rocco's Tacos. Palm Rock- Beach, Florida. Rocco's Taco Tacos. Tuesday. All in on Marty yeah. is a Marty Party. He is. Good work right there, brother. Marty always brings nice. it on Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio. That shouldn't and... make me laugh that hard, but it does. I can't help <laughs> <laughs> You're always making us laugh with you. That's the good news, Marty. Marty Smith's America the Podcast, by the way. Check it out. Churchill Downs, Kentucky Derby. For those who have never been, Marty, like me, how would you describe the experience so far? Educational above all, Adnan. I think on Thursday here I went to horse racing Harvard, man. And I had some of the most awesome professors you could imagine based on the relationships that my producer, Chris Kugler, has built over all these years. I was afforded respect and time I hadn't earned yet with Todd Pletcher, who took Always Dreaming to the Kentucky Derby Championship last year, and with Bob Baffert, who is basically the face of this sport as far as I'm concerned, a four-time Kentucky Derby winning trainer. Uh, the thing that stands out the most to me is... You know, we all see the betting odds of the 20 horses that'll run. We don't see the odds to become part of the betting odds. Even the smallest setback, whether it be injury or illness, can thwart the dream. And it's amazing to see the care and the passion and the love and the devotion that everyone involved in this business has for its culture and for its tradition and certainly for the horses themselves. Uh, hell of an education I got yesterday. And I imagine part of that it was talking to Bob Baffert, and he has the favorite in Justify. Yep. So tell us about that conversation. Mike, I consider him the Nick Saban or Bill Belichick or Greg Popovich figure in this sport. Even if he doesn't win, he's a standard setter, and he has this commanding presence. And based on his resume, uh, this respect level that is so esteemed, And I talked to him for maybe 15 or 20 minutes, and he's extremely intelligent. He's extremely um, appreciative of his position and aware of his position. And he actually told me, look, I have four, but if the odds would have gone my way, if if certain things would have gone my way over the years, I could have eight. And uh, just a tremendous conversation with him, and I was honored to have the opportunity. He's a legend in this sport. For people that watch horse racing for two and a half minutes a year on Saturday in May here in Kentucky, uh, he's the face of the sport. He's the one name and that shock of white hair and those sunglasses, that's the face we all know. And so to get to spend that time with him was tremendous. He just looks like he reeks of money, Marty. Like if I didn't if I didn't know who he was, if I just saw Bob <laughs> Baffert walking down the street like that, I know who that dude is, that dude's got money. Yep. That dude's got paper, baby. You know what he looks like, Adnan? He looks like a walking Ralph Lauren ad. I mean, he has like this stance about him. He had on this vest. I think it might even even been a Ralph Lauren vest. He has on this nice, nice button-down shirt with the stripes on it. And not a hair is out of place. And he's got on these purple sunglasses. He does. He looks like a pile of money just standing there. And, you know, when, when you think of... Turn your mic on. You are a professional. That's my fault. And so when you're there, it's a, it's also from the trainers and the horses and the owners, also a different breed of fan as well there. And I know they're not all there yet, obviously, yeah. uh, but still it's a different group there. And I would imagine by tomorrow, you're going to have some sort of hat to wear that, uh, that uh, everybody wears out there. I know the women do that, but you can jump in and do that as well. Well, I need to go find a hat. I know the ladies wear them. My wife Laney's coming. I carried her hat on the plane. She's like, Martin, I cannot pack this hat. You need to bring this hat. So I got on my airplane on Wednesday evening, straight from Paris, by the way, and I have this box, and it has Laney's hat in it. It's a nice hat. It's a really nice hat. Um, One thing that is wonderful about this event, there are certain American institutions of sport. The Masters is certainly one of them. The Indianapolis 500 is one of them. And certainly the Kentucky Derby is in that list. And it's there's so many wonderful traditions. Those hats, everybody's beautiful, by the way. I mean, yesterday they had what they call Thurby here. It's uh, Thursday races where a lot of local fans come out. Everybody was stunning. Today, the Kentucky Oaks. Pink is the color of the day. Everybody looks tremendous already. 
And so I, I missed that pink memo, by the way. I'll work on that <laughs> next year. Uh, and then tomorrow, of course, is the Derby, and all the beautiful people come out. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing. Mint juleps. Mike was sitting earlier. He's been in the Derby a few times at Greeny. Kind of not, doesn't go to his palate, the bourbon, the mixture of it. Have you had one before? <laughs> have you, have, have, are you a fan of it, Marty? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a bourbon guy, man. I'm, well, I'm a whiskey guy. I'm a Jack Daniels guy. But up here in Kentucky, that's, that might be sacrilege saying that up here in Kentucky. I'm okay. If they want to pour me some Makers or some Woodford with a little men in it, I'm game all day long. Goalie, did I just hear you, by the way, talking about drinking beer out of a bass or something like that? Well, yeah, for the for the predators, yeah, it's exactly right. The the, uh, the catfish and the, no, a catfish, not a bass. Bass, I'm putting oh, on the catfish. wall. Catfish, okay, yeah, a catfish. Catfish going in the pan. Uh, but uh, yeah, drinking beer out of the catfish, it is kind of nasty. We're talking to Marty Smith, Marty Smith's America, the podcast, also host of Marty and McGee Saturday mornings on ESPN Radio. So you've been there for a little while. You got yourself a bit of an education, enough to make a pick for this race. I'm going Magnum Moon. And I'll tell you why. Magna Moon and I have history. Pletcher was kind enough yesterday. Again, guys, listen. This is the trainer that won the Kentucky Derby last year. And he loves the Arizona Wildcats. When I first met him, he has on this Arizona Wildcats uh, quarter zip pullover. And we have this 10-minute conversation about Kevin Sumlin, who's one of his friends. Sumlin's coming, by the way. And so we start talking ball. We start talking football. We start talking basketball. And he's like, come on. So we go over there, and he, uh, the horses like mints. That's another thing that I learned. They like those star mints, the circle mints that you get at the restaurant. Yes. So I, f- I feed always dreaming a mint, and then he's like, come here. And he introduces me to, to uh, Magnum Moon. So since we have history, and since we're boys now, i got to go with my guy. So I'm going Magnum Moon, even though Justify seems to be most everybody's winner. Marty Smith's America the Podcast. We're in cahoots now, Marty, because Louise Carnetta, our, one of our uh, managers that's here. That's a good thing, son. No, that's right, because you have Uncle <laughs> Uncle Rico, I think, from Napoleon Dynamite, was a recent guest. Oh. Yeah, so man. Now, tell me about that. So I love that movie. Uh, it is a cult. I mean, it's a cult movie, right? Oh, yeah. And there are so many wonderful characters within that movie. And like, for example, John Hedder, the guy that played Napoleon, he made like $1,000 to play that character. Wow. I think he's probably made a little bit in the aftermath, in residuals, but he made like a grand. And my favorite character is Uncle Rico. Who doesn't know Uncle Rico? Who doesn't know that guy in your hometown who still throws on the Letterman jacket and stands by the fence and swears if he would have been in the game, they would have won state in 82? We all know that guy. So he's my favorite character in the movie. So I had Travis Rockhold, my producer for the Marty Smith America podcast, run John Gries down. John is the actor that played Uncle Rico. And I laughed for an hour straight. It was interesting, though, man. Like he, kind of, he told me how the movie came to be, how he became Uncle Rico, that the director uh, of the movie, actually on his way to school every day as a kid, there was actually a guy that they passed who had the van who set himself up in front of the camera with the football and started chucking footballs at the camera. That's how Uncle Rico was born. It's a real person. So it was a fascinating conversation. Uh, John was so gracious with his time. And another thing, quickly, that I loved is that we got into talking about fathers and sons. John was talking about how, why he loves sports so much and that his father's absolute love for baseball uh, triggered John to go try to play baseball in junior college just because he wanted to feel closer to his dad. He told me this great story. So his father uh, had this ring. He went to Georgetown, uh, Georgetown University. And this ring, his father's class ring had a black onyx on it. And so John, after his father passed, John has these great memories of hearing Vin Scully as a kid. All right? So after his father passed, he went to Dodger Stadium with this ring on, his father's ring on, and just pointed it at the field so that he could watch the game with his dad. How awesome is that? Wow. It was just really fulfilling for me to spend that time with him. That's, that's a so, cool yeah. story. That's awesome. Yeah, that man. is. Marty Smith. Go listen. Yeah. We need you. Marty Smith's America the Podcast. Download, subscribe, rate, and review. <laughs> Great stuff as always, man. Crush the Derby. Thanks, Marty. Thank you, guys. I'm going to get one of those juleps here in a minute. Have a good day. Hey, everyone. Mike Golick here. Support for the Golick Wingo podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident. 
when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. I'm a one-trick pony, literally. I show up at kids' parties and act cute. That's pretty much it. So excuse me for being bitter when Geico says not only could we save you money on car insurance, but we do more, like give you 24-7 access online, over the phone, or even via our award-winning mobile app. Well, ooh-la-la, aren't they (laughs) multi-talented? Hey, I said organic carrots. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. The door is very good. It's Tiger Woods trying to break on through the other side. The Raptors trying to break on through the other side. The Capitals are trying to break on through the other side. So there's lots of drama right now when it comes to teams and players trying to get over the hump. Well, real quickly, my, my wife wanted to know um, for Toronto if they yeah. want to kind of mix it up to change their fortune when they go to Cleveland. Yeah. Do the alternate jersey thing and put Lebronto on it. <laughs> Maybe you just bow down to the king. Uh. Beg for mercy. Tell Chris that that's an option. At this yeah. point, we're willing to try anything. <laughs> Le- any- Toronto. <laughs> like anybody who actually, like there isn't anybody who thinks this, but if anybody actually thought the Raptors had a chance, when you think about four or five games yeah. against that Cleveland team last night. Crazy. Like one win right now yep. would be amazing. Yep. Mm-hmm. And we, and that's how much one day can change things. It's crazy. All right, Michael Collins joins <laughs> oh, us now, our yeah. ESPN golf analyst. I had Nan Verkin for Trey Regolik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. We're presented by Progressive Insurance. All of our phone guests like Michael on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. He always brings it, and he's from Quail Hollow in Charlotte right now, where Tiger Woods is even par 71 in round one. So far today, two over overall. I won't steal any more thunder, Michael. Break it down. Tiger, how's he doing? Tiger's struggling a little bit today, and then I'll tell you, first thing in the morning when he got on the driving range, there was no wind whatsoever. The wind that he's facing right now, as a guy who caddied on tour for 10 years, we call this wind caddy killer wind because it'll go from nothing to about 10 to 15 mile an hour gusts, which means you have no idea what's going to happen to the golf ball when it gets up into the air. Now, Tiger, at the beginning of his round on Thursday, struggled a little bit getting used to those new irons. The big moment, I think, for him came in the par 3-6 where he hit a shot on the tee that ended up in a bunker, and it was what we called a fried egg. It was Waffle House completely. It was just one of those short-sided, no chance at saving par unless you're Tiger Woods. He makes an incredible up and down save for par. And then birdie seven and eight with those new irons in hand. And you're thinking, okay, he's got it going. And then the putter falls apart and he couldn't get the speed of the greens. And that's what's going on partly today as well is Tiger's still struggling with the speed of these greens. They're just not as fast as what he anticipated and most of the other guys in this field as well. Not going to lie. I didn't hear a word of that after you said Waffle House, but that, that's a, that's a whole nother, another thing for me. <laughs> Scattered, smothered, covered. Buttered. I got you. Yes. <laughs> All right. I, I, my wife heard you tell this story, and I need you to tell everybody this story. When Tiger was trying out the irons, and and one of the reps was was walking with him going through it. Tiger, what it? Tell everybody what Tiger did as far as <laughs> hey, I think these clubs are off, and just how exact he is. <laughs> It's so we're walking in the practice round and the tailor made rep comes out after a few holes and goes, Hey, pretty good, huh? And he goes, They're about a half a degree off. And the rep looked at him and was like, and I even was like, okay, half a degree. All right. <laughs> Whatever, Karnak. And the guy takes a couple of his clubs and goes to the tour truck and comes back about 40 minutes later and goes, yeah, they're about a half a degree off, which for us human beings is so minuscule, you'd have no clue. You'd have no clue. But for someone like Tiger Woods, that's like his thing. And he is he is like he's a savant when it comes to stuff like that. He also is one of those guys who knows. So each grip is a certain millimeter thickness. And if some of the grips are a millimeter or two off he knows it and can feel it which is so weird but that's that's you know when it, if that's your thing that's your that's what he's a savant at so as as we look at his game we've seen tournaments where the driver was off the irons were off and now this one i believe through what six holes he already has he has 35 holes or six holes 13 putts he had 31 putts yesterday 
So when this tournament ends, whether he makes the cut or not, where are we going to be, Michael? When you, when you break down Tiger Woods' season so far, what's the answer going to be? I think Tiger Woods is just like every other golfer right now who just come back from a big injury and has played okay and then switched irons and having a little bit of an adjustment period. And it's one of those things where we saw the same thing with Rory McIlroy, you know, before he went on a big tear. And we saw the same thing with other golfers as well. When they change equipment, it takes a little bit of time. And then when they come back from injury, it takes a little bit of time. Now, remember, next week, Tiger Woods is going to the Players' Championship, where he has had some serious success recently. You know, remember, he won there not too long ago on the last year that he was winning golf tournaments and and ended up winning player of the year it's a place too where he doesn't have to hit driver and he's comfortable now that golf course is a little different but the feeling of comfort there is going to be the same for tiger so i think at least for next week expect success for tiger woods maybe not a win but i bet he'll contend yeah and health is always such a concern for tiger michael that's what's always going to be the case here right you feel like mentally you feel stronger but physically can his body hold up? That I mean, it's an impossible question maybe to answer, but how's he looked at least today from that health standpoint? Adnan, it's funny that you said that. Yesterday it was 87 degrees. It started in the morning at about 50 degrees, which was perfect. And by the afternoon when Tiger was out on the golf course, it got a little hot. North Carolina can get a little humidity, just a smidge. Might have been sweating a little bit. Just saying. But Tiger on the golf course, I saw on the back nine, he started doing some stretching. Just a little bit. Almost like his back was getting a little bit tight. Now, it might not have been his lower back where he had that surgery. But he was kind of making some moves to the side. And he was stretching his neck out just a little bit. Which was kind of strange to see. Knowing how warm and as humid as it was outside. You would think that's the perfect time for your back to be loose. That being said... This morning when he was warming up at 6.40 in the morning, when it again was under 60 degrees, he looked fine. Everything was flowing well. And for me, the big thing is, how does he look when he's walking? And he looks really comfortable still as he's walking. So I don't think that injury right now is even an equation whatsoever. I think he's fine. Talking to Michael Collins, our ESPN golf analyst. So Tiger doesn't look, if he makes a cut, doesn't look like he's going to contend even if he makes a cut for this tournament. Who's playing well? Who's looking like they have a good shot at winning this? You know what? I love the situation that Rory McIlroy's put himself in, even though he's three shots back of the leader, John Peterson, who's out of LSU. And John Peterson is one of those guys who a lot of people are going to go, who? I know, you never heard of him, but... He won the Web.com Tour Championship a few years back to get his card, and he's one of those guys that's not scared of the situation. That being said, Rory McIlroy is a two-time champion of this event, and Rory, after the Masters, shut it down and shut it down to the point where his wife had to say, get off the sofa, we're going to do something. And he went out, He number one, he binge-watched on the sofa billions mm. to just take his mind off of what happened at Augusta, and he read two books. He read two, but one of them was Essentials, and the other was something, the Paradox of the Chimp, something, I think that's the that's name, an Paradox of the Chimp. And, I mean, it was, well, yeah, no, and they were self-help books, and, and I did some research on them real early this morning, which my coffee kind of has left me, which is why I forgot the name <laughs> of that second book. But <laughs> I'm just saying that Ty, he read, Rory read those books, and it did something good for him. So now he comes back to a place where he's had success, shoots three under on the first day, which when he finished was only one shot off the lead, and you know Rory's not scared of conditions like this. And now he's a little bit more confident and over what happened at the Masters. So I think Rory's the dude to watch this weekend. By the way, the name of the book, The Chimp Paradox, the acclaimed mind management program to help you achieve success, confidence, and happiness. Are you kidding me? That title's way too long. See? <laughs> I know, but at least I, I got the words right. I just mixed them up a little bit. That's it. <laughs> All right, Mike, Michael, I have one personal thing to talk about. But before the Masters, you were nice enough to come on our show and talk to us. And then the Monday after the Masters, I saw you again, Hooting the Blowfish, Monday after the Masters. You and Matt Berry were doing your show from there. little different atmosphere than the Masters. I'm wondering, could you tell how hammered I was when I was on your show? Um... Well, you know what? You're one of those guys that hides it a little bit well. I could tell because I've always been a big fan. And when you are in a very good place, we'll put it that way for PC folks, uh, when you're in a good place, you actually speak slower. 
which is funny. And you're you. You're one of those that you love a lot more. You know what I mean? Like, I love you, man. You know, you guys have, I really like being with you so much. It's so good. You know, so in, in some ways, people who wouldn't know you, they'd have no clue. But for people that do know you, they're like, oh, yeah, he ain't feeling no pain. I'm getting a hug. <laughs> the always perceptive there Michael Collins. There you go. Great stuff, man. Thanks, Thank Michael. You. Appreciate it. Anytime, fellas. AARP can help you become your healthiest self. It's why we offer health tips for your body and your brain. So take on today and every day with AARP. Learn how at takeontoday.aarp. Golick and Wingo. Uh, what should the punishment be for the loser of the show bracket challenge? Sean, each staff member picks an NFL combine drill. Ooh. Mm-mm. Do combine drills? We're athletes. You're an athlete. Devin, what are you? I'm an athlete. Come on Okay, now. sure. Allie played every sport imaginable, so it wouldn't be an issue. So are you saying Brett's not an athlete? No, Brett's a, Brett's a researcher. He's a seismologist. He's an earthquakeologist. I heard he can ball. Brett, can you ball? I put the size in seismology. There- Sports Center brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. To win in basketball, you got to play great coverage. And with Straight Talk Wireless, you know you're getting great coverage because they use the exact same 4G LTE towers as the big carriers, but for a lot less. Straight Talk Wireless, only at Walmart. Refer to terms and conditions of service at straighttalk.com. This is the captain in for Trey today at Golden and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN News. The captain must go down with the ship, and the Raptors will be going down shortly. You're going to go on holding on to the steering wheel, though, aren't you? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Something about loyalty uh-huh. here. We'll get some uh, bread etymology here momentarily, a horse or not a horse, in right. honor of the Kentucky Derby coming up tomorrow. But I did want to squeeze in a little mock draft for 2019 from our friend Todd McShay. Headline is, McShay's way too early draft, and he says, listen, this is way too early, but just for fun, last year 12 players who were featured in Todd's way too early mock draft ended up going in the 2018 first round. In this draft, we had four quarterbacks go in the top 10. First question for me, where's the quarterbacks? He doesn't have a quarterback going until 17th. That'd be Drew Locke of Missouri, who is back to school for a senior season, led the SEC in passing yards and passing yards per attempt. Only other quarterback he has in the first round, Justin Herbert out of Oregon. What a difference of quarterback year from last year to this year. You, you almost wonder a guy like Lamar Jackson, who could have gone back, right, for another right. year, if he would have maybe thought about going back and, and being higher in the draft, possibly. But either way, it went in the first round, so uh, tough to argue. This if this holds true in this way too early draft, this is my draft. There are, count them, 11 defensive linemen slated in this mock draft to go in the first round, including the first three picks of the draft. Number one, he has going Buffalo Bills, Ed Oliver, that D-tackle from Houston, who is a fantastic player at 290 pounds playing on the inside, Mike and tackles on the other side of the line of scrimmage. These has the second pick of the Bears going to Nick Bosa, Yes, brother of Joey Bosa, Nick Bosa from Ohio State. And third, the Giants, he has a DN from Michigan, Rashawn Gary going. After that, he has two offensive linemen going. Uh, a tackle from Mississippi, Greg Little going to the Jets and to Tampa Bay, Trey Adams, an offensive tackle going to Washington. So linemen, defensive linemen and then offensive linemen going in the first five picks of the draft as opposed to all the quarterbacks that went early on. And when you mention D-Lineman this year as a group, you'd better mention Clemson. Yeah. He has three, not one, not two, but three Clemson D-Linemen going in the first round. Dexter Lawrence going number nine, Clellan Farrell number 10, and then the last pick in the first round, uh, Kristen Wilkins from Clemson. That deal is surprising. Some of those guys that, that were thought were maybe going to come out early mm-hmm. went back to Clemson. So this could be a D lineman heavy first round. We will see. It's a way too early draft that Todd McShay even admits is way too early, but mm-hmm. it's fun to look at. One other guy I'm excited to see, Bryce Love, the kid yes. of Stanford, the running right. back. He was second in the Heisman voting last year. Now could be the favorite to win the Heisman. He hasn't gone 18th. And if you read Todd's column, he points out that it's not, he didn't do the draft order. It's generated by football outsiders. Right, right, right. They're projected records for the exactly. 2018 season. So definitely something to check out there. Forward thinking is brought to you by Cintas, a trusted partner of businesses everywhere. Cintas ready for the work day. Kentucky Derby is tomorrow. It's the most exciting two minutes in sports. Golic's been there in the, in the past. Mm-hmm. Can vouch for its excitement and the drink fest that it is. There you go. Brett Pratt, our researcher. I cannot wait for this. We're closing the show strong <laughs> horse. Or not a horse. Wow. Real simple. You're going to give us <laughs> you'll give us a name and tell us, are they running in the Derby or not? I love it. Yeah, I'm just going to give you two horse names. Uh, one of them is a real name. One of them is a fake name. You have to tell me which is real. 
Okay. Yep. Promises fulfilled or solitary Sam? Solitary Sam? Solitary Sam. Solitary Sam is the real one. Promises fulfilled is the fake one. I'm going to flip it and say promises fulfilled is the real one. And the second one's a fake one. At 30 to 1, promises fulfilled. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Solitary Sam's a good fake thing. Yeah. Verse number two, Rosé Sunset or Vino Rosso? Rosé Sunset is the real horse. There is the no way Rosé Sunset is a real horse. Yeah, that's a real one. No way. At 12 to 1, Vino Rosso. <laughs> oh, yeah. Colic's a pro on this, man. Are you kidding me? All right, I'll bounce back here. Dusty's Prize or Lone Sailor? Dusty's prize. Dusty's prize. Uh, Dusty's prize is the real horse. Lone sailor that's made. The up. way you're <laughs> picking him, I I'm, I don't know, but you're picking so I'm, bad. I'm going opposite <laughs> and saying lone sailor's a real horse. At fifty to one, lone sailor. Oh my god! <laughs> you can't make. You think so bad? I didn't know, and I just picked against you. Oh, Lebronto. No, that's what it is. Wow. It's the hangover. <laughs> you, you are actually doing worse than your basketball team right and I'm now. Trying. Go ahead, Prado. Wow. Blended citizen. Or Sergeant Toga. Okay, blended citizen. It's not Sergeant Toga. There, there is no way Sergeant Toga is a real horse. At fifty to one, blended citizen. Oh. <laughs> that was a gimme. That was a gimme. Wait yeah. a minute. If I'm counting correctly, I've gotten everyone right. You have. Okay. Correct. Yeah. Free drop, Billy. What? Or Mastodon. Mastodon's a real horse. What was that first one? Free drop, Billy. Yeah. Who the? F- no. No way. No. No free drop, Will. At no. thirty to one. Free drop Billy. No! Oh, no! I was want to bet on that horse. Yeah. Mastodon it sounds like a regal animal wow. that could win the derby. And your final real or fake horse. Couch potato or no. good magic. Oh, good magic has to be the name of the horse. Couch potato cannot be a horse. Good can't, magic. It can't be couch potato. At twelve to one. Good magic. All right. <laughs> God, yeah. So I went one of six, one of five. However many there Gold, were, I got Gold, one wrong. Gold went five of one. I lost count of how many there was. So I went one of so five. So give me some money. Away. I'm going to go down to the to the casino <laughs> and the sports book tomorrow. Bet against whatever the heck and, I and say. Tell me who you want, and I'll be sure to not to bet that horse. You're going to be there tomorrow. You're going to. I'm going to go. You're yeah, why not? Money down. You got the weekend. Well, off, the weekend. Right? I got the weekend. I'm going to go down there, hang out. You know, Jesus. But, is that you? No. <laughs> Hope I'm saying that after the, as I'm collecting my money. We'll have to wait and see. <laughs> that is such a great drop right was, there. Uh, yeah. Bottom line is we found out this. Nobody has any morality on this show right. except for Cliff. Cliff. If Cliff found money, he'd return it. A he simple plan. Said he'd return Thornton, it, he's returning and he money. was called a liar. Yeah. Yeah. I'm calling a liar too, but good luck to your Sixers tomorrow, Cliff. Yeah. Whatever. Cavs sweep. Congratulations. And everybody else, take the money and run. Exactly. Thanks so much for listening to Golik and Wingo. We'll see you next week. Thanks for listening. LeBronto.